Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, April 16, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of medicine. Researchers at McGill University are developing a blood test for early detection of breast cancer. Currently, breast cancer is mainly diagnosed with mammograms or similar scans, which is an issue. Although it's currently the best option, these testing methods are expensive, cumbersome, and generally don't catch cancer really early. Cancer, as with any disease, is best treated with the earliest detection possible. For years, a particular protein biomarker has been researched because it's known to signal cancer, but only in certain quantities. Even people without breast cancer have certain amounts of this protein in their blood, and it varies from person to person. Without the ability to establish a clear threshold, it was necessary to develop a test based on multiple biomarkers. Much of this work was examining and expanding on microfluidic technology already used in the analysis of blood proteins. After handling the technical end, they tested 32 different biomarker quantities in 11 healthy people and 17 people with a certain type of breast cancer. Sure enough, they found a subset of those proteins that seem to indicate breast cancer, although more testing is needed to confirm these findings. Still, the researchers are working on a handheld version of the blood test that could be done in a doctor's office. And from the world of evolution, a group at the University of Tennessee have proposed an interesting evolutionary hypothesis called the Black Queen Hypothesis. The name is based off the card game Hearts, where players attempt to discard the Queen of Spades to help them win. In biology, the Black Queen represents a costly but vital function for the organism. It's essentially challenging the idea that evolution tends toward greater complexity, which isn't to say bacteria and other simpler organisms are unlikely to still exist, but that loss of entire functions are generally seen as negative. Not so, according to this hypothesis, and this was based on a previous study they did on an ocean-dwelling bacteria particularly a cyanobacteria that is the most common organism that uses photosynthesis on Earth. The original study was to find out why such an abundant organism was notoriously difficult to grow alone in culture. Turns out this bacteria was very sensitive to hydrogen peroxide and similar reactive compounds. It had grown completely dependent on surrounding organisms to break down these compounds, allowing it to focus energy on other things like multiplying. While this is a relatively new hypothesis, it has some interesting implications, especially if the principle applies to higher organisms. Our final story is a quick update from the world of agriculture. Scientists from the University of Copenhagen have developed a new form of drought-resistant sorghum. Sorghum, aka dura, is a corn-like crop often grown as forage food for animals and is common in drought-prone regions. Normal sorghum is quite resistant to drought naturally, but when exposed for long periods of time, the plant produces a substance called durin. This is a problem because that compound breaks down to form cyanide, potentially poisoning the animals. So, using plant breeding and advanced chemical screening, they were able to produce a new strain of sorghum that doesn't produce cyanide, which is incredibly important for farmers in warm climates as climate change is expected to increase the severity of droughts. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.